Hi, my name is Mitchell Wiranagara and I'm going to be presenting about my ethnography titled Coming of Age in Samoa, A Psychological Study of Primitive Youth for Western Civilization by Margaret Mead. Moving on to the first slide. The author is Margaret Mead. She is a white American woman and she was 24 years at the time she conducted her research. She, re she researched, she lived with Samoan people for one year and her research spanned three different villages. And this is the background of the ethnography. So she studied young girls between age 8 and 20 years old to study about the, rel the re relationship about the maturity and culture and how culture impacts maturity of a young girl. So Mead proposed that social culture has a significant influence on maturity, something that Western culture never thought of until she made her research. And since she was a, a woman researching a woman, she was 24 at the time, and she was researching a woman between age 8 and 20 years old. So she gets a more of an emic perspective, and because she lived there for one year, she already knows the customs of the culture. She was also, she also used a cultural relativist perspective, which means that she didn't, she didn't let her own cultural beliefs to to stop her thinking about stop her negative thinking about the other culture and moving on to the theoretical perspective so the, the theory used in this ethnography is the culture and personality theory that analyzes the re relationship between the, an individual and his culture this this theoretical perspective is popular in the in the early 1900s and it mostly research about how did culture influence youth in different societies which and how so socialization creates personality patterns an interesting point about the ethnography is that young girls have freedom to choose when to have sex and get married unlike the western culture that Mark Mead, Mead lived in for her whole life and like the whole Western culture believes that young girls are more passive and men should be more active, but vice versa in the Samoan culture. But girls who live in pastor's house doesn't have sex, and if they if they have a sexual relationship, they will get kicked out of the house. Another interesting point is that most girls marry based on political motives, not love, unlike unlike in Western society. They mostly have pre-arranged marriages with people from higher social ranks. So males in this society, they aim for a higher social rank to find to find a girl, to marry a girl. And unlike the Western society, girls at the age of 15 and 16 have a lot of responsibility. Because a Samoan girl will be taught to be responsible right from being young. And a girl raised by the Western civilization will only get more responsible as they get more educated. And women raised in Western culture is taught that they are getting mature on the onset of certain physical aspects of their bodies, such as menstruation cycles, broadening of hips, as well as the change of reasoning capacities that may at first not be understood. But women on the women of Samoa have a more strong sense of growth and responsibilities. And the society and culture of, Samo of the Samoan society that meet research in was, is based on a chiefdom. So they have two chiefs in the society, which is talking chief and the regular chief. And they use agriculture as their main way of living. And they also have a bilocal postmarital postmarital resonance pattern, which means that a child a child from a marriage a, so, a child resulting from a marriage can be raised by the bride's parents or the groom's parents. They can choose, so it's not limited to just one parent, to just one side. I mean. So moving on to the summary of research. So someone, Samoan culture places more expectation towards their youth. 
it is also true in the Western culture, but not as much and as deep as in the Samoan culture. And and the conclusion of the research is that maturity does not depend solely on the physical body and physical growth appearance, but also on culture and expectations. Because right from childhood, these Samoan girls will grow up learning from the older siblings or women, or women in the in their community, and therefore they are they are expected to act within within those provided frames. And Samoan and Western implications of maturity are vastly different, which is a groundbreaking theory at in her time. And then the strengths and weaknesses of this ethnography is that this ethnography does a great job of learning young girls' lives and culture. It also revolutionized a new understanding for the term maturity, which was defined as a physical, more of a physical aspect in Western culture, but it's more of a cultural aspect after Mead researched about this. And Mead's book, this book, the coming of age in Samoa, it popularized anthropology as a field of study, especially in the in that in that time, in the culture and personality theory time in the early 1900s. But the weakness of this ethnography is that it is somewhat somewhat controversial, because other anthropologists try to go back there again and and then to prove that, and then they try to conduct the same research although at a different time, and then this provides a lot of controversies because some authors say that Mead's research was made up just to gain popularity but I can argue, we can, we can all argue that since the, anthrop the future anthropologist after Mead's time was visiting Samoa or that society culture in a different time and with a different positionality, the, the author, the other author was a male and Meat was a woman and that made Meat's research considerably easier since she was conducting research to a woman. Alright, thank you for the attention.